Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, at Sommelier. Uh, and uh, Sommelier uh, title for our event today is uh, Sommelier Sellers. We want to provide a community update on the coming of the Sommelier Sellers to launch. Um, and with that, um, I want to thank first and foremost, of course, everybody in our community, um, the members of our community in Telegram, uh, who have been LPing into pairings um, at ridiculously high gas prices. Thank you. Uh, we also want to thank you um, uh, to, I think Mario, I think we need to invite um, uh, Unique as a, a speaker. Okay, good. You got it. Yeah. Um, also want to thank everybody on our Discord um, and all the folks who uh, participated in uh, the community.sommelier.finance discussions on the first proposals. Uh, there are more proposals coming. Momentum is here, and, and the objective of this meeting and this presentation is to share more of that momentum with the community. Zaki, are you here this morning? Can you hear me? I am here. And how are you doing today? I am uh, I'm doing great. It is uh, Wednesday morning. It is sort of the last working Wednesday of the year. <laughs> oh, my um, goodness. Uh, we are doing a lot of we are doing a lot of community chats on Wednesday as one does. That's right. Um, and uh, here we are. Um, I also wanted to briefly address. Um, you know, we had been talking about actually executing the airdrop um, uh, 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 today. Um, we where we are is um, we have a new release of the co uh, or we have made most of the updates to the gravity bridge that we want to. Um, but we're still working on what we call steward, uh, which is the data pipeline for um, for the validators. Um, and uh, it's coming together. It's almost it's almost ready, um, but it's not ready today. Um, so se the first seller that we're talking about today will actually run on top of that. Um, and we want to launch. We our sort of goal has been to launch the seller um, and the airdrop on the same at the same time. And I would like to. And so we're gonna we're 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 gonna we're gonna punt to January. Um, but like, it's still, uh, that's still our plan. That's awesome. And, and I think uh, you've done, a, 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 the protocol team has done a, a massive amount of work um, in the upgrade of the gravity bridge. So um, I think uh, taking- the, the biggest change that we made to the gravity bridge, we did two things. One is um, some of you have known that like our sort of closest cousin fork, uh, the Althea, Althea gravity bridge launched on Monday. Um, so they open sourced a whole bunch of code um, uh, that we uh, last week um, that we actually pulled in. Um, and so they have a bunch of clever gas saving stuff that they had done um, that we had to bring in. And so we brought all that in. And then we also brought in uh, uh, and then they like we they changed some user experience stuff um, around the ERC-20. So they came up with a, a much more clever way than I had been planning and that we had been planning. Uh, to make the supply of the Cosmos tokens match the bridged amount, which was really cool. Um, so we, we, we all, we, we did that. Uh, we brought all of that in. Um, we also have one of the things that we more, we anticipate doing more than I'd say the current, than the Althea Bridge group is we do Im imagine that we will probably be shipping future updates to, the, to our core bridge technology, um, our, our core bridge contract. And so we wanted to put in plumbing so that like, the SOM ERC twenty token can actually migrate with the the to a new gravity bridge um, in the future when we when we want to release an update. Um, and so I've been wanting I, that that was those updates all all are all in. Um, and so, but you know, I I'm also just like not a big fan of launching blockchains uh, and like doing major software updates. You know, right before the holidays. Um, so. Uh, but like, also, yeah, we're 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 hard at work right now, focusing on uh, steward and getting steward up and running, um, uh, and ready for the validators to use. That's awesome, and I think uh, we're also organizing. Uh, we'll be organizing a validator event for uh, validators sometime in January. So if you are a validator uh, and are interested, just you know, again, engage with us, uh, Telegram or Discord. Uh, because we are going to be, you know, talking some more to validators, making sure they understand the software and a lot of what's coming in the upgrade. Uh, and so, you know, thank you to Zucky and the team. That's awesome. Uh, all right. So switching gears um, out of uh, protocol updates, we're going to talk a little bit about sellers. And, uh, I, and of course, uh, I have Sun and Unique here. Sun, you guys are able to chat? You're good? Uh -huh. 
All right. Hello. Proof of life. Okay, cool. So great. So what's going to happen is, um, you know, the gravity bridge is going to be upgraded. Uh, folks are going to get ready for sommelier cellars. And everybody's asking, like, well, what does that look like? Um, what's going to happen to sellers? You know, uh, how do they work? And I thought maybe we could start this conversation talking a little bit about uh, Uniswap V3 and where we are. We spent a, a lot of time. We've been, this, you know, Somalia has been an early team on Uniswap V3, creating the first subgraph um, uh, or launching the subgraph for Uniswap with Kevin and team. And so now um, a lot of time has passed since those early days in May. And I'm curious, Sun and Unique, if you could talk a little about your view of Uniswap today and um, you know, what's happening in that, in that AMM and that DEX since, since that time, since you guys have been spending time on it. Yeah, so uh, I can say my view of Uniswap is it's this really interesting, complex playground for developing strategies. Uh, it, I don't think it gets harder than this. And uh, I mean, we'll we'll talk more about what what that means, the the complexity and how hard it is. But uh, it's it's a you know it's a really challenging problem that, and that it's challenging on a bunch of levels. So there's data level, there's the uh, you know the impermanent loss which we can talk about. And uh, for me, you know, we've spent a lot of time on it, but I'm learning, I'm learning new things every day, and uh, it's still challenging. So. Awesome. I mean, you know, it, so it is a hard problem. And I think, you know, Zakiyo says that we should always pursue the hardest and harder problems. Um, Zaki, do you still agree that Uniswap is a hard problem and, and that uh, it's, it's still interesting because of that? Yeah. Um, I think concentrated liquidity and how to LP on concentrated liquidity um, still represents one of the hardest problems in the space. Um, so, yeah. I so, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so Sun and Unique, what I'm going to do now is, since we've talked about it's a hard problem, um, and I'm an LP, um, my basic question is I want to know, um, can I make money on this thing? So uh, I see that uh, Uniswap is pulling in, you know, billions of dollars, you know, what, three to four billion dollars in, in, in liquidity or volume. Um, you know, uh, you know how, do I, how do I get a handle on profitability? You know, we, we talked about this actually yesterday though i think one of the one yeah. of the things that is probably the most significant that we've observed is that like the increases in tvl on uniswap v3 are mostly coming from um the introduction uniswap's introduction of a one basis point um fee tier um mm -hmm. that they initially launched with a three basis point fee tier and they launched they moved they released this one basis point fee tier which has become very popular for a certain set of, of, of mostly algo stable of like stable coins. Um, and it's sort of undercutting um, essentially curves um, trading costs. Um, and so uh, that has been like, I think probably the most successful product launch uh, and thing for Uniswap V3, but is actually kind of not super relevant um, to what we do. Um, so I'll just like point that out. Well received. Okay. So, so, okay. So, yeah. So, and thank you for the alpha. We can go pursue some of these, some of these pools, but uh, for the bigger pools, the ones that, uh, you know, like Uniswap, um, like uh, look at USDC ETH or maybe, um, you know, even some others, uh, Sun and Unique, uh, can I make money in these pools? Uh, you know, can you tell me that I can make money here or is it, you know, is it as easy as uh, one, two, three, or is there more to it? I would say that it, what you probably would want to look for is a pool that still has high volume, but it has a lower TVL, because with concentrated liquidity, you're competing against all of the other people that are LPing. So if there's if there's less active liquidity, you're providing more of the proportion at a given price range. So that's really what you want to look for. So for the example, the USDC ETH. Although that pool has like high TVL and high volume, you're competing against so many other people that it may not be as profitable as, you know, some of the, like, you know, maybe the top, like the ninth rank TVL or the 10th rank TVL. For you right. as well. So, so you're giving me some alpha. You're saying, Tarek, even today, all you got to do is look for low TVL and high volume as possibly the best opportunity to, you know, sort of capture 
the most fee revenue that I could possibly do. And, and I guess I'm going to have to, you know, so my understanding is to look at that. That's a, that's a constantly moving target. Or is that usually stable for most of the pools that you guys have seen? Yeah, that's definitely a moving target. And I, I mean, the, the that's only one side of this, right? So you would mm -hmm. want to look at the liquidity distribution of where people are also currently providing liquidity and maybe see if like how you feel about the price movements or volatility plays into where there's a dip in liquidity and if you want to fill that gap. Okay, that's a lot of big words and I'm not the smartest guy in the room. So let's assume that, uh, you know, I have a, <laughs> I have, I have my wife's, uh, you know, Christmas gift that um, I'm going to make some LP, you know, use that money to do some LPing. Um, how, what is it, what is it like to like think through all these steps with somebody who has, you know, $5,000, $10,000? I mean, a lot of our LP users are in that range on pairings today. I mean, what is required to like really get that information? Is it, we do some data mining or is it, I just look at, you know, um, you know, DeFi pulse or some other metric. I mean, what do you guys do to sort of understand what that looks like? So let me just jump in and say, uh, give a bolder perhaps answer to your question, which is that if as a, as an individual user, it is very likely that you cannot make money on Uniswap by yourself on Uniswap V3. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's Don't a be a Grinch. Plan. Don't be a Grinch. Come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you going to be the Grinch? I'll justify. I'll justify. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's a paper last month uh, from the banker team and Topaz Blue, and they essentially studied the, all, all of the Uniswap V3 positions historically and uh, measured them with respect to impermanent loss. So the question is, after accounting for impermanent loss, how many of these positions were actually profitable? And it turns out that roughly half of them actually lost money, right? So you're providing liquidity and you lose money when you uh, account for impermanent loss. And so the question is, okay, the half that did make money, was there anything, was there anything that they did that is easy for someone to do to, to beat impermanent loss? And the answer is no, right? So you can look at things like duration of the position. So time in mark market versus timing the market no correlation there, right? But everyone, it's like Thanos, right? Indiscriminately wiping out half of the positions. And so the, to, to answer your question, right? This is what makes it hard. It's really this, this question of impermanent loss. And uh, as a user who just wants to, you know, market make, provide liquidity and, and then forget about it, very likely the answer is you cannot make money doing that, right? But that's what sellers are for. And uh, anyway, okay, that's okay. just me. Uh, okay. okay. Did, did you did you drop a Thanos reference <laughs> to a Uniswap discussion? <laughs> uh, and just like that, snap. Okay, so you're telling me it's hard. Um, you're telling me I'm going to lose money. Um, you're telling me my life sucks, and I'm going to lose my wife's Christmas money. Okay, so um, you know, all right. So then, will you please help me understand? You know, what are you guys doing? <laughs> to save me from losing my, my small piece of pie in Uniswap land? Uh, so what we're doing is uh, getting in the tank and studying this problem of impermanent loss and how we can, how we can beat it, right? And uh, this is still very much a research question. I can't say that there is just a, you know, an objective uh, guaranteed way of beating it, but this is what, this is what strategies are for. And it seems like this is, uh, you know, this, this kind of deep dive, doing analysis, doing modeling, and uh, really studying the problem for a lot of time is what's required for successfully providing liquidity. So that's, that's what we're doing, right? That's, that's our jobs. It's to, to study this problem, and we're, we've, we're focused on it, and we've been focused on it. And, uh, yeah, we, we do that All so right. that you just don't have to, right? Yeah, that's true. So, it, you know, why we don't deep, dig a little deeper in the weeds here, when you say that you guys have looked at it, you know, what are some of the things you have looked at, if you could get a little arcane for us, like, how, how deep do you go into this analysis? I mean, so the way we like to think of it is just outlining it. I mean, so one is just have a history of all of the times that liquidity was added or decreased 
and then he swaps so that we can run historical backtests. So if we're gonna, when we're gonna have a strategy that's proposed, it usually means that we've gone across different time intervals and actually seen like how many fees does this collect and then what is the impermanent loss. And then the, the challenge of impermanent loss is that you, as an LP, you're, you're always like, whenever price moves off of spot in your position, you're, you're always buying the asset that's dropping in value and selling the asset that's rising. So you kind of lose money on both sides, regardless of whether the price goes up or down and a pair, you're, uh, you're losing out if it's going away from the middle in, ter in terms of impermanent loss. So really you have this, you have all, what are all the ways you lose money, right? You have your gas fees and then IL, and then all the ways you make money are from swap fees. So it's really a game of finding when there's going to be a lot of swaps in a place that you can provide a large proportion of active liquidity. And so basically we're just finding ways to either predict volume, predict volatility, things like that, so that we can run historical backtests and find um, something that looks profitable when running in the future. Got it. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of players we've, we've had, um, and thank you for that, that was awesome. Um, we've had hosted events with, you know, folks, other partners in the space, uh, you know, who are also, um, you know, sort of providing active liquidity. When you look at the landscape of the other players um, and what they're doing, um, you know, what are your thoughts on, on some of the, you know, some of their progress relative to the work that you have done? Do you, do you have any insights? Do you have any way to say, hey, you know, this is where we differ or are we all chasing the same approach? I see this as a uh, kind of a, like a, from a research perspective. And I think this is very much a research problem. And so, you know, there's no one who has a concrete solution to this, that, that I can say, at least as, on the Uniswap V3 side, like this protocol is like Bangor who, uh, you know, tried to provide impermanent loss protection. But from the, re as a research problem, we, you know, we're all kind of going, the, we're all searching for the holy grail here. And so teams like, you know, other teams like uh, Gamma Strategies, does a ton of work on this, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say we have a radically different perspective. It's just uh, we're all trying to solve the same problem here. Got it. And and just so I understand, if if you if there's a you're 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 coming towards uh, making a proposal for the first seller, when that first seller is launched, um, does that seller improve over time, or um, is that seller with one strategy sort of as is? Um, does this research allow you to continuously improve? the vaults as, as time passes. Yeah, sellers will certainly improve over time. Okay, so, so it's, a, it's a continuously improving battle, but you know, I as an LP can join other LPs into a SOM seller slash vault and depend on your efforts, your team efforts to continue to find ways to make or improve our ability to capture fees, yeah? Exactly. Um, I was curious, um, you know, uh, we see a lot of, you know, folks, um, uh, liquidity mining, I want to bring up the topic of liquidity mining. Um, liquidity mining also seems to make, you know, um, it very attractive to join Uniswap V3. Um, I'm just curious and, you know, I don't know the answer, so I'm asking broadly, have you guys looked at how liquidity mining may affect um, the performance for an LP in a particular uh, pool on Uniswap V3, or is that something that maybe you haven't touched it yet? Yeah, uh, so uh, the, you know, the Ponzi's are, are interesting and they're exciting. And a lot of the times when you see, you know, you have to, in the space as an LP, you have to know, learn, you have to know how to read APYs that are cited to you, right? right? So one right. thing is that Uniswap V3 is not going the Ponzi route, right? There's no, there's no liquidity mining incentive natively. And uh, there's, there's pros and cons to that, right? So the, the con from an LP perspective maybe is that it's less sexy, right? The APYs aren't, right. as, aren't as wild, right. but there's arguments. I mean, this was clearly a deliberate decision and there's arguments that it's better for long-term viability. So it's just something to keep in mind, right? You're not going to see 4,000 APY on a Uniswap pool, but when you see that number elsewhere, <laughs> that means. 
Got it. Got it. That makes sense. Um, all right. Zucky, what do you think so far in terms of what the seller team has ready for launch as we think of sellers coming online? I think what we have is a very exciting technology demo. Um, like one of the things that we have like hypothesized is that like, you know, dynamic rebalancing Uniswap V3 is one of the, is like a really good use case for our, our core infrastructure technology. And so it's yep. going to be really exciting to put that into production. We have other sellers um, that I think are a little bit safer that we have, you know, have been contemplating and, and are coming down the pike in, in the future. All right, so we, we just got a conveyor belt of sellers coming from Sommelier. This is awesome. It's what good sommeliers do. All right, um, so Sun and Unique, uh, questions. Uh, let me see if we can take some questions for the community. Are there any questions? Any folks requesting questions? Let's see. Uh, somebody's asking a question. James, let me see if I could approve him. Uh, request to speak. Hitting approval, and nothing's happening. All right, all right. So I'm hitting approve, nothing's okay. uh, happening. Let me see if I, hello, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Or we can hear you. Do you have a question? Yes, I am talking about the uh, coin launching date. Okay. And what is the... what's your question? Uh, I'm talking about the coin launch date. Uh, which date will launch this coin and what is that? Uh, great question. All right. So uh, the, if you if you want to learn about coin launches, I do recommend you check our blog, sommelier.finance slash blog. Uh, the sommelier token is live. Um, if you want to see proposals being launched, what you should do is definitely check um, community.sommelier.finance. You'll see the proposals up for airdrops and also other distributions. But, and other uh, proposals. You, uh, That's the place to go. Right now. Sir, but right now the condition market is. All right, that was it. Uh, so um, let me see if I got any questions from folks on our team. Uh, somebody asking me about <laughs> when moon. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you when Samili will moon, but um, I do encourage everyone to please take a look at our SIPs uh, proposals for the airdrop. Um, like Zucky said, uh, we're doing work to get that ready. Uh, and a lot of also improvements on the protocol, so that is uh, going to launch. Uh, Unique and Sun, last question. Um, are you guys able to tease us with what seller you plan to launch on Uniswap V3 first? We do. Do we, do we announce that here? No, we, well, we are going to tease. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to wait and see. But... <laughs> All right. Yeah. You were saying, yeah, so we're going to wait and see with bated breath, but anything that, uh, you, you know, can we come talk to you guys in the Telegram? I think, uh, uh, are you available for folks to engage with? Can folks ask you guys questions in the community? Please do. All yeah, right. Telegram Great. or Discord. Excellent. Uh, and so uh, thank you for that. We're excited to see what the big surprise and reveal will be on the first sommelier seller. And thanks to everybody for dropping on by. Uh, with this, we'll wrap up. Any last words, Zucky, before we head out? Nope. All right. Well, that's it for us for today. Thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, keep a look on community.simulate.finance. You'll see more proposals coming online as the airdrop comes online. And also, that will be posted the first SOM sellers that will be launching uh, once the upgrade is complete. Thanks, everyone, for participating. Have a great week ahead, and happy holidays.